Okay, so uh, we got the engineering drawings here, which you can see on this screen. So I'm wondering, okay, so the end goal, okay, we've made our satellite in CAD. Mm -hmm. uh, we can 3D print it from CAD pretty easily, but eventually we have to machine it out of aluminum. Uh, so we don't exactly have the ability to uh, 3D print aluminum. Yeah, not so. easily. And talking to people maybe a while before we do that uh, at our level, especially in the, talking to a friend, 3D printing it may not be as strong, um, at least in, in front of the current states. Anyways, there's a whole process of machining that goes with it, and to do that, you have to translate your model into pictures that the machinists can look at and uh, create the part for you in addition to CAD files as well. So I guess right now, because I'm not super familiar, uh, outside of the little bit of work, saw you guys working on about what the thought process is for going and creating these drawings. We're gonna make a, couple, a video about um, yeah, how you guys came up with it. I think maybe the best place to start is the overall uh, picture. Make sure this is sure. So I'd like to do that one after. afterwards. Okay, yeah, yeah. We can switch that. So you've made a you made a CAD model, and now you need to make an engineering drawing so that it can get machined. Yeah. So. The purpose of an engineering drawing is that you can create one and give it to any machine shop in the U.S. and without any other uh, descriptions or contact, they should be able to make the exact part within your specifications. Yeah. Any machine shop in the U.S. and I'll give it the same thing. Uh, so it's basically a contract between the designers and the machinist. Gotcha. This is just you. I should realize this is just for U.S. like. If you give this to someone in Europe, they couldn't necessarily use this same thing, or would they have to? Yeah, so they, they uh, in Europe, and I believe Japan has their own system. Okay. Um, and it's basically just, it's it's really just the details. Like, how do you um, separate one part from the original part, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you do the three-section views, okay. whatnot, and then the preferences in description and whatnot. So, because yeah, we made these drawings in SOLIDWORKS, although I'm assuming the same for Inventor, how they create their drawings. Are they exporting, um, assuming the, I guess, the US standard, and did they have options for switching that you know You of? can choose it. Oh, okay. Right at the very it. start, they ask you what uh, type of drawing you want. Do you want the metric uh, ASME, which is what I use, or okay. uh, English ASME, or I'm guessing they have the Japanese one, I'm not sure. Oh, so it's the ASME, that's the, that's the Yeah, I believe that's the correct one. Okay. Um, gotcha. Okay, so once you figured out, okay, what framework we're working in this case, we're working the US one metric for the mm -hmm. SME. Now we have, okay, we're working the framework, we've opened up SOLIDWORKS in our case, and now we need to start putting the parts in. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess we can yeah, probably the same process mm -hmm. for all these parts. Let's take a look at the top plate and I guess talk okay. me through what your thought process was there. All right, so um, first up, a good place to start is to make the um, descriptive box on the lower right. Oh. Yep, Correct. I'm slide this over a little bit. Yeah, right back nope. there. This guy here. Um, so we don't have any uh, professional engineers, so we're not going to use engineering approved or checked or any of that stuff. But you can still include who drew it and the date. Um, that's in, the date is important just for uh, when you need to do new revisions, so you can double check that it's the correct one. Gotcha. Um, drawing number, uh, revision A. So if you gave them a revision A and then you need to change it, strongly suggest making it a revision B okay. for the next one just so because that's what they're going to check. Uh, make sure the size is um, large enough if you need if What's you're having trouble getting um, p uh, dim dimensions or features to fit in it you can uh, go into properties properties and increase the drawing size. What does size B mean? Um, it's like the second size basically. So is A like the like this is like the full like if I took your part and you give you this drawing like this looks exactly like the drawing where B is like half of that? Or is yeah so or um I think A is the smallest and then okay. B is bigger and C is bigger. And yeah, okay yeah. so this this is this doesn't really have anything to do with the, the dimensions necessarily just means how big the part looks when you're giving the drawings? Uh, it's how big the drawing is. Oh, it is. Okay, uh, that makes sense. So okay. if you have a C drawing, then that would like, like uh, three you're going to see on the next one, uh, uh, you'll notice that all these, uh, all this, uh, uh, this uh, the words and the numbers oh, are a lot smaller. smaller. That's because okay. it's supposed to be printed on a much larger piece of paper. So Okay, how come, so how come they want us how come you don't just shrink how big the, um, I guess how big the part side is, how come you, you just shrink the whole, 
I, you say this whole, I, I'm wondering why they even bother with the whole CB and A size uh, uh, specification down here versus just like, oh, it takes up two pages. If you're, um, if you're looking at uh, dimensions like, say this, yeah. it can get very, very crowded very quickly. Mm -hmm. And um, even for drawing or dimensions like this, it's hard to tell which line these are, uh, uh, are referencing. Oh, okay. In this case, it's there's two lines here, and we're referencing gotcha. the this upper one. So this C just says, okay, this is more like a big overview, yeah. but you're, not, well, you're probably a, not going to be able to see it. It's saying to print it on a larger piece of paper, basically. Ah, uh, that makes sense. So okay. it's yeah. just, um, yeah, so it stretches the whole thing out okay. more. So you can see it better. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, okay. So you have yeah the drawing size, how big of a piece of paper you need to print it on, mm -hmm. drawing number. Uh, yeah, I guess that's just it for like a, even okay. if you have a set, this is like number four. Mm -hmm. uh, reversion A versus B versus C. If they had you updated a few times. Yeah. Same for assembly drawings. So, you know, have a name, part number, yada yada. Yeah. Um, also include um, some comments. Good, just include your whole name and then who it's for. Um, in the comments, uh, that helps uh, ensure that your um, initials can be properly identified if need be. Gotcha. So we can go um, back to you. It's probably not going to be a problem, but you know it's good to have your name on it, anyways. Gotcha. Let's see. We want. Um, I was going to say something, but I totally forgot. Yeah, I'll get because. So at least for this, because we're focusing on this box right now. So we have okay name, part name, drawing number, mm -hmm. revision A versus B versus C, part size, and now you have your initials over here, mm -hmm. uh, just to, to specify. Okay, if we need to come back to you, and you're like you, you're like, hey, I, I think this part needs to be adjusted. What were you thinking when you put that there? We know who to reach out when mm -hmm. you did it. It's usually it's this is more meant as a quick check of which uh, which of your engineers design. This. Oh, okay, so, gotcha. So and the rest ideally, of, they'd know. And the rest of these, so engineering approved, manufacturing um, approved. Oh, okay. So this is just like each of the. If you had like different stages of people who had to check it, and you have different people initiating. Yeah, that. and honestly, I don't even uh, I don't even remember what uh, what it looks like for those. So we're okay. In the space, we're not going to bother with those since okay. we don't have a PE to check stuff. So yeah, what true. are we going to do? <laughs> a little bit um, super fun. It's also good to have a copyrighted box thing. Here or um, a uh, not a copyrighted but a uh, property, property of, of okay if that makes sense cubes in space or whoever um, I removed it because I'm technically not part of the school uh, okay. um, I mean I could I could totally give it to the school yeah. it's not a problem but I just I want I really just want to be able to put these online and say, yeah look what I designed yeah so, that makes sense you know. um, tolerance is very important so you'll notice we didn't include. Uh, Tolerances on a lot of these things directly. Oh, so you just put a big box that states. Yeah, all so the... that's saying if it um, if it only has one uh, x, it's to point one. Yeah, if, it, if it's only in the ones place, then it's plus or minus point one. Ah, uh, okay. Um, if it's in the tenth uh, the tenth place, then it's also point one. Um, I changed that just because. Yeah. Uh, why not? Yeah. Um, and then so on. You get more and more accurate. On angles. Uh, okay, gotcha. Uh, angles. You know, also and included a uh, Gina uh, interpret per ASME uh, Y fourteen point five two thousand nine. So that's the tolerance. At least I'm up for it. Is this just like a standard for? Yes, yeah, so that's the um, that's a GDNT standard. So it has to do with how to. It uh, describes best practices for uh, dimensioning and calling out holes and yada yada. So is this all preset or do you just have to like look, is there like a place that you can like go online, see these standards like a couple pages and then just make your solver strong? Uh, yeah, so I, um, I linked a doc, or I, um, I believe I uploaded a PDF to the, uh, the Google Drive. Okay, so we can look oh, at the that. ASME thing. Okay, um, so then this just references that. Yes. Um, it's pretty long as standards tend to be <laughs> but you can just go through and say you know I'm kind of sort of looking for this well I'll look in that section okay and it gives you good practice on how to do stuff and a lot of what I'm going to talk about up here is related okay, to that so one. for this thing is there um, a particular so that, that's the whole document is there a particular part of the document that I will be looking for because I see ASME 
when it, is this like, like section um, Y14.5? No, this is just the whole document. Ah, so you just uh, yeah. look through there and you kind of skim through there to see what's Yeah, I mean, there's here. an index that starts, so. Oh, okay. Start, start okay. there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the whole document is like 100 something pages. Okay, so light but, reading. Um, I got through like three chapters of straight reading before I, like, <laughs> it just before fell I uh, completely forgot I was reading it. <laughs> um, <laughs> that makes sense. I've written in just like completely mm -hmm. boring draw, just like uh, on the eternal man. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, okay, so you have that material. When yep, you're material. Making, uh, um, I included T6. I don't know if it matters too much because that's what all 6061 is pretty <laughs> much. But uh, but it's good to include that. that that's a temper. Uh, that's a description of temper. So, I'm not sure what temper is. Um, let's see. If you have you ever seen people do um, like uh, forging, like forging knives and stuff. A little bit. I think one they they like stick it and heat it up and like mm -hmm. smash it. Yeah. So they heat it up. Um, and heat the knife up so it gets uh, hot and a little bit malleable, and then they okay, heat it yeah. a bit. And at the end of it, they um, heat it up one last time, and then they quench it, drop it in the water. Ah, oh, okay. And uh, for steel, that makes it very hard. Hmm. Um, which is what you generally want. Uh, usually afterwards they also then anneal it, which is then they heat it, up, heat it up again and then they leave it out and let it cool naturally. Okay. And that makes it not quite as, uh, not quite as hard but less brittle. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Um, but anyways, yeah, the T6 is just a heat treatment sort. Um, T6 is the strongest for uh, 661 aluminum mm -hmm. so far as we're concerned about. Um, you definitely don't want a uh, dash O or dash material, which is the uh, really soft, really weak and stuff. <laughs> it's like, um, I'm not sure why you want to use that, but yeah, sure pretty much everyone uses T6, T6 anyways. So so just stick to that, okay. Yeah. And it's then, good to include it though. And then below that, that's our uh, yeah, the finishing, mm -hmm. how smooth it needs to be, and that's something that was written and explicitly stated in the uh, CubeSat or not CubeSat, CubeSat documents for one of the requirements for putting this thing into a... Component. Yes, so uh, I gave, for most of the surfaces, I gave just a rough uh, general uh, finish. Mm -hmm. um, this, is, this, this is good, but not, not nearly the best you can do. This is about as good as you can realistically get it done quickly. Ah, uh, okay. So, At least um, 3.2 versus... Uh, yes, yeah, so they do it 3.2, 1.6. They, it, they have weird numbers for okay. it. So. How did you know that one was the one that could get done most cookie versus like 1.6? I googled it. <laughs> okay. Do you say, um, how, how long does it take yeah, to do Yeah, if you it? really want, you can use it. Um, I think in the future we should actually go with the less strict one just to try to make it a little bit cheaper. I don't think it'll honestly make a difference. Yeah, okay. try that. I guess we just have to look at their what the requirement is and like, okay, just as long as it's below, around that and mm -hmm. figure out the cheapest option. Um, is. There, I also called out on another drawing oh. some, uh, some ah. slightly higher tolerance, so uh, 0.8. Uh, so that is um, uh, two steps improved, I believe, from the uh, 0.32. And so that's because this was specifically required by the CubeSat document. Oh, and that's, that's for those chamfers up there? Yeah, uh, for the top surfaces. The top surfaces, okay. And then I also called call it for this entire side. How did you, oh, which is, uh, okay. basically this. Okay, and is there a way, is this, um, like, if you go into SolidWorks and you click, is this something where you have the explicit, so you, I know they have like the pointer, Arrow where you can like manually put in a number, um, but is this something? Um, yeah, I guess so how do, let's how do you see. Put that go to uh, you go to arrow. I think it was arrows, and then uh, one of the symbol options is this guy, which is a finish. Uh, okay. uh, and then you can put in what the value of the finish is. And I had I couldn't figure out how to make it to lead, so I just added a second arrow and that goes to a, an, an empty box. <laughs> Working around um, the yeah. system. Okay, gotcha. But at least so focusing on this on these boxes, are the is this gonna be the same for every part? Or did, uh, yeah, it's just... gonna be pretty much the same for every part. Okay, um, nothing else. Minor changes, but um, okay. just you know when you're going through, just go through, does this make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that yeah. make sense? Okay, you know, yeah. Gotcha. Um, obviously, uh, if you're making a drawing, you're probably gonna not, not gonna put design by Greg on it. Yeah, gotcha. Um, go ahead, but you know, it's not required. Okay. Um I also made a note, uh, break all sharp edges, that just means when you're uh, when you're done machining a lot of edges are going to be very sharp, Yeah. and uh, so that just means take a file and, and just 
scrape them real lightly. Okay. Um, would they not we'll usually, get to this in a second. They wouldn't usually do. Oh, but because they, they have, we it's didn't just to make it. sure. Make sure. Yes. Yeah. Some parts, uh, if you get machined, you you want them to Sorry. stay. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Like exactly as they were. You don't want them to be dulled at all. So that's just a good thing to mention. Just to make it super clear. Gotcha. Um, and then this, the seed view one, assembly drawing for tolerance because this was the part. So that is uh, referencing uh, this bullet, which is going to be over here. So yeah, basically, uh, the problem we have is that we have a, uh, we have three parts, this part, and then two uh, touching the sides of it. Yeah. And the overall, sorry, touching the sides of it, and the overall distance. Um, between the outer edges is 100 millimeters plus or minus 0.1. Yeah. Now, if we just put plus or minus 0.1 on all three of those uh, tolerances, then you gotta remember tolerances stack up. Yeah. So the, the overall tolerance could be plus or minus 0.3, which is not what we want. Mm -hmm. um, we could set it so that uh, all these tolerances uh, are cut by a third or so, make it, uh, well, a quarter or so, so that uh, there's plus or minus point zero two five. Yeah, and then added um, up, they would probably they would mm, and then up. added up the plus or minus uh, point seven five. Yeah, I just did that to make it uh, uh, even nice, even numbers. Um, but that's kind of a that's a little bit more difficult difficult of a tolerance to reach. It's going to take a more time to do it, and that's going to cost a bit more money. Mm -hmm. So they pointed out that there is a, another option, which is we leave those tolerances the same, but we make a note, see view one on assembly drawing for tolerance. Mm -hmm. let's, let's find that. Uh, view one of uh, the assembly drawing, oh my god, this is tiny. <laughs> You'll notice the uh, assembled part has an overall tolerance of 4.1. Yeah. So, the, so that way you can get rid of the uh, tighter tolerances on the other dots. So they just say, okay, make what, make it more or less this part, but overall the structure has to be assembled into 100, at least 100 millimeters plus 0.1, plus or minus 0.1. Point, point mm -hmm. And you got this nice drawing here of what the assembly will look like. Yeah. That's really nice, so that just to make it super clear. Um, and then a completed model. And then, I um, can't remember why I have this honestly, but... Um, but yeah, so that helps cut down on the really tight tolerances because once they get the parts done, they'll bring them together and uh, combine them, and then they'll check the tolerance. Gotcha. And if they need to sand down the edges slightly, they can do that. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, okay. So that at least yeah. that explains that little this this symbol right here on the tolerance. Yes. That represents that, which is represents this is like okay. Overall, this is how tight you need to make yeah, it. Yeah. You can just go into SolidWorks and make a note, and then um, give it one of these triangle shapes. Okay. That makes and then sense. give it. Uh, just Put them in this area usually. Okay. Uh, you can also sometimes put it there. I think, I think this is right preferred. There. That seems pretty good. Um, just kind of follow that yeah. general format. Let's see. So okay, we have we pretty much discussed this box here, and I think that's the same for pretty much all the all the other boxes. So figure out the uh, thought methodology for that. The next thing um, I guess maybe I'm interested in going over uh, is all these various like. I guess maybe we'll just, let's just talk through this part and then I'll maybe yeah. take a quick glance through the other parts to see if there's other special exceptions we made okay. for. Uh, but yeah, at least I'm interested in, um, I guess from the SOLIDWORKS class I took, usually if you, there's like an auto, it's like an auto dimension to you hit auto dimension, dimensions everything. Yeah. Usually you put it on, I think the best practice is you put it on the, I, forget, I, I think the side that tells the person most, I forget the specific way they yeah. formulated it. Um, but I guess maybe one, if the first thing I'm interested in is one, what's the best practice for choosing what size to, I guess, explicitly state the dimensions, and two, there's some parts where you also stated the dimensions again, such as down here, uh, what the thought, method, thought process was for that mm. specific part there. Okay, so um, yeah, you bring your part from a SolidWorks, SolidWorks uh, uh, a part file into a drawing. Yeah. Um, it's good to start off with a three view sort of thing. Um, in this case, it started off with this one and had a side view and then the other side view. Yeah. Um, just to get it a rough view. And then I also like to have a, um, what's it called, orthogonal, I think? 
Yeah. So an orthogonal like, picture just so that they can see what the general thing looks like. Yeah. Just so that nothing in here makes them confused if they're tired that day or something. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so they don't have to like, okay, because I know one thing when I'm reading draw is like, okay, eighth, like if I have like a part here, it's like how much uh, was this here? And you have to go look back at three drawings, like, okay, then you have to like in your brain flip it to this side. Mm -hmm. So this is just another way. So do you restate, I guess, how do you know? Okay, so we restate it once here. Because that's like the most obvious part. It's like, oh, okay, the length, the width of this is that far. At least, how do you know not to restate it over here? Like, like, like. Um, let's say, yeah, it would be. Uh, it wouldn't be on this drawing. It would be on that one. Yeah, or that one, for instance. So you could absolutely put that one over here. Mm -hmm. um, there's probably some. Uh, probably some sort of thing saying, you know, this is the best place to put it, yada yada. Yeah. I usually just start off with what's the original, or what's the, um, which is the main drawing that I'm starting off with, and trying to fit dimensions there, Yeah. and if I can't fit them neatly, then I move on to the other ones, uh, or okay. if it just doesn't show up on that drawing, then move it to another one. Okay, gotcha. Um, one good thing to start off with is deciding datums. Datums so you are... Can see, uh, in this case, it's a box with a letter and this uh, triangle there. Yeah. Um, and then there's another one here describing this surface. So we have this surface and that surface described. And then uh, over here we have another one on the back surface. Okay, so what are these datums doing? So these are... Uh, they are kind of like uh, coordinate origins. Okay. So a little bit like... Um, in a par file, you have zero zero yeah. start. Um, this doesn't have to match up with that, but this is um, telling him where to measure tolerances from. Okay, you know, so start. if I took actually, I think we might have a little. Oh. So if uh, if you when you got the part done, or when you're building in whatever, you assume start off by assuming this this surface is perfect. It's yeah. Perfect size, and then you measure tolerances all the way across there. Okay. And that's what you do for that. And you're measuring to here, basically. Okay. Um, this is just a starting place saying measure tolerances from here unless otherwise specified. Okay, so th and this is, th is this all tolerances or just tolerances in this direction? In like, let's say this is like the Y direction here. It would just measure all tolerances that are parallel with this line? Yeah, in all tolerances in that uh, direction, okay. basically. Gotcha. Um, you can also have... Um, a round part and draw a datum line to that. Okay. Uh, in which case it would be a radial datum. Um, you can totally do that. Okay, but they would they would know how to do yeah. that, at least that, but you just say, okay, this is where I want you to reference all, yes. this, all these measurements. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then this A would just corresponds to everything parallel in yeah. that direction. Yeah, so measuring from this line to this gotcha. Gotcha. So that's for that reason, I, uh, and then it's good to take uh, a dimension dimension from those uh, datum lines. Okay. Uh, and I'm not, I'm nowhere near fully qualified to talk about datums. Yeah. But this is just kind of the basic practice. Okay. So. And that's for us. That's for because at least in two, I would have thought because like okay, we give you these dimensions, and the I thought the machinist would have best know where to put the datum lines, but that's on us to give them a good sense. Um, yeah. So let me see if I can draw an example. You can just flip it over. Um. So I've just got some features here. There's a raised area um, on this plate. So I measure from there to there is. Uh, 100 percent yeah. for today. Actually, let me pull this out a little bit. Uh, just so we're... All right, so we're measuring there. Um, well, if I assume this is the datum... Uh, I can measure the next feature to there, uh, and okay. the next feature to there. Yeah. And that would mean that the tolerance here is plus or minus one millimeter. Yeah. The tolerance here is plus or minus one millimeter, or point one. Point one, yeah. And then tolerance here is plus or minus point one millimeter. Yeah. I could, if I wanted, instead do one of these tolerances like that. So now the tolerance between there and there is 
plus or minus 0.1 millimeter, mm -hmm. and the tolerance is between there and there uh, is 0.1, and but from there to there it's 0.2. And how would you say, would that just be another datum there, or? Um, no, you want to keep it um, from oh, one you datum. reference, so all yeah, your measurements so, start here, mm -hmm. and then they Start go here, go to there, and then from there, go to there. Okay. So now you have uh, an extra tolerance. So if I wanted this one to be 0.1, I would start from here, go up to here. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted a 0.2, I said go from here and then do what you did here. And this, okay, this would yes. be 0.2. That makes now sense. Now you okay. can also have uh, all three of these and give all of them a plus or minus 0.1. Oh, and say explicitly mm -hmm. if you want to do that. But the um, shorthand way is if you did that. Yes. That versus You'd that. Have to, okay. did have to put a little bit more time into it. Okay, gotcha. Uh, other options. If what really matters is the distance between there and there, and the yeah. distance between there and there, you can have those ones this, uh, give both of these tolerances and then not worry about it. Okay, gotcha. The important thing is that it has to, um, it has to work with what you're trying to decide. Mm -hmm. So you as an engineer, you know how it goes together and whatnot. You gotta make sure that you're referencing the correct location. Mm -hmm. um, for the most part, just to make Everything roughly plus or minus 0.1 millimeter. I usually all I go just from the datum line to there for all of them. Okay, gotcha. Um, and if you have a, another feature there, you just do another one there. Okay, yeah, but yeah. you're referencing everything from that. Yes. That makes sense. Okay, uh, but everything has to at some point reference back to the datum line. Okay, as or yeah. two datum lines. Yeah, if you have multiple that makes whatever. sense. Okay, so, so I think that's a, a good thing to go so with. That, okay, that like. I didn't even know that was a thing, I didn't even know. I thought this was mm -hmm. just reference stuff, but that, yeah, that's really good to know. So, okay, we have datum lines, mm -hmm. um, so then these are all mm -hmm. reference off the datum lines. Yeah, so start putting in uh, dimensions. You can, there's a thing that you can go to that will automatically throw the dimensions in there. Mm -hmm. That'll give you a good start, but some of them you'll want to change because they're not going to reference the datums or anything. Okay, so that's the main, that's the main check. Yeah. It's like, okay, automatically hit, and if it's not referencing the datum, okay, readjust it so it's, Mm -hmm. off the datum line. And, okay, so yeah, each of these parts has a measurement. Yeah, it has, a, yeah, okay, these all have different datum lines. So that makes sense. Yeah, so a, a better example, I guess, would be here. So I referenced the, uh, the datum here. I put the CF just saying that's um, a continuous uh, feature, which means it references this surface and also this surface. Mm -hmm. um, if I did not put that, it would only be talking about this guy right there. Oh, but so it's anything within this... Uh, yeah, so anything on this line for this section view. Okay, so that... Uh, so that's, I'm just saying this is the datum. Okay, gotcha, that makes sense then. And then um, for here, you can see it gets quite uh, quite, quite complicated, nice. yeah. but I tried to reference the datum line as much as I can. The datum line, uh, it goes over between the views. Yeah. Um, you can, if you want, to re, uh, re redraw it on the new view, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to though, that's but just if you want to be more clear. But that's just, but this CF would state that, okay, this transfers over to here. Uh, right? No, this is just talking about here, oh, okay. but because this is the same uh, same surface as this, okay, it, uh, trans it okay, transfers they, over automatically. The, okay, yeah. gotcha. Okay, then that would be the same for mm -hmm. over here as well. Okay. Yes, and that would be the same for these parts as well. Okay. So Cause these are, these two feet are the same as these two feet. Okay. Um, so you'll notice here, I did a lot of uh, referencing yeah. on the line, and Just it, to make it sure, takes yeah. a lot of uh, horizontal space. Yeah. Um, because of that, I did not also ref uh, describe where these uh, lines are on this drawing. I didn't have enough space, so yeah. I put them on this one. Uh, and okay. It was more clear anyway. Yeah, so. that makes it. Yeah, you can see how far mm -hmm. away. Okay. And you'll notice I also did these in kind of a step pattern. Uh, that's because you don't want. Um, you don't want lines to be crossing each other. Mm -hmm. So if I moved uh, this tolerance out to there, that would be wrong because I'm crossing two, three lines there. It, it just, well, at least for one, it just makes it harder to read. And then, yes. Yeah. Harder to read, just, just bad practice. So just no, so. no line crossing. <laughs> yeah, don't cross, don't cross the streams. <laughs> um, yeah, and so make it uh, fairly clear. Notice, uh, since there's this big gap here, Yeah. I uh, separated these ones out a little bit just to make it a little more clear. Um, I don't, I don't know if there's any official documentation on that, but I just want it to be obvious. Okay, so that, that makes uh, that explains that there. I'm interested. So that the datums and then um, not crossing the lines. That's making sense. The main thing I'm interested in. So this 
hole right here. It looks like okay, yeah. two, I'm familiar with, okay, uh, looks like okay, two M3, uh, 05 well this tells okay how big the holes are mm -hmm. when like what sort of bolted threads are going into uh, what is all, what's this what's going on here in this box mm. okay so that's a uh, well, that's some of the only part of this drawing that is actual GDNT yeah okay. so GDNT uh, being uh, geometric dimensioning and tolerancing so they have special features like this mm -hmm. that help you um, specify location of a part basically mm -hmm. Um, and you can, by using boxes like these, you can get better tolerances um, or better, more accurate features with lower tolerances mm -hmm. and less crap on the page, basically. Gotcha. So, um, and, and this see. is better tolerances just because just it explicitly tells the machinists. Because um, the, are these, okay, is this, yes, like I'm just saying, this could, being, yeah, I could pretty much put um, more or less put the same tolerances on the two dimensions uh, of its location, which are oh, I think it's at uh, the yeah. seven and the ninety-seven. Yeah. Um, if I just left those uh, without these boxes, then it would just go back to the regular tolerance, mm -hmm. which is plus or minus point one. Yeah. Um, and that would put the center of this hole in a box. Uh, plus or minus point 0.1 on from each edge or uh, yeah so point 0.1 oh okay. uh, so this is this so this feature because this is in like a little box over here and I'm not sure um, no I'm just drawing an imaginary box around oh okay um, but this is it's just saying that the center of the hole has to be uh, within point 0.1 of where I drew the dot okay so oh okay gotcha that makes sense um, in each direction so I drew a dot it has to be within point one. Oh, okay, so that that, that direction or point, point one. one. So that okay, so centered point one in each direction. The B and the C are these the these datums yeah. as well. Or? Yeah. So B and C are the datums. So in this case, I'm referencing the B, oh, datum, B datum and, and the, the C, C datum. datum which oh, is so this is point so that, centered point yeah. zero one ref with reference to the B and C datum. Mm -hmm. That's what that means. An important yeah. thing to note. Uh, I you can include this. And this is the diameter symbol. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also do the radius or just not have it. So that says. Point one, plus or minus point one, in a diameter. So, so instead of being at a square, it's saying if you take the exact point uh, okay. to there and then make a diameter, then it has to be within there. Okay. So it gives you a little bit better tolerance. Um, sometimes that's important. Sometimes it's not. Okay. Um, but it is good for holes to use a di diameter. Gotcha. Okay. Um, I think that explains, because I think the rest of them seem pretty straightforward. These are all referencing the data. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you do have features like that, yeah. uh, where you're uh, pulling out boxes, using yeah. this, and then for the dimensions going to it, put a box around them. Oh, that, so that they know that's reference. Yeah. So okay, actually, a, that was going to be This is a basic dimension. So assume it's perfect, and then use this other tolerance instead. Okay, gotcha. So, uh, so that's, and that's when cool. you would only use boxes if you have something like Correct. this. Correct. Okay. That's where you want to use boxes. Gotcha. Um, okay. Yeah, so then the same for these holes here, they have these uh, boxes. Yeah, okay, that explains um, that. Okay, so that, okay, so I think... So I'm one thing to uh, look at, I made, um, this is going back, but these yeah. uh, uh, these lines don't uh, directly go to a datum, uh, but this line goes to there, which goes to there, which to a datum. So in this case, I'm saying this is the dimension I care about, mm -hmm. and this is the dimension I care about, this is and then this one I care about. So that's how they go from this datum. Is mm -hmm. this a datum? Uh, no, mm -hmm. actually that's a datum. So how, at least how'd you know that was the datum versus that was the datum? Um, because we started here, uh, we flipped it. Uh, oh, flipped it see. on its side, and now it's on yeah, its back. Yeah, so we flipped the side and then back. Oh, okay, gotcha. So um, the direction they flip differs in, I think, the Japanese and the European Union one. Okay. Uh, just something to so your mind. parts always flip, if you start here, they flip on each other side when you're drawing? Uh, yes, yeah. so that to that. Okay, um, yeah, and the data would end up being Yeah, so the idea is if you had the part and you were flipping it over, that's what you'd go with. Gotcha. Um, then the Japanese one is if you have the part in the air and yeah. you're rotating it. Ah, uh, okay, but that's a different thing. Which is yeah, but not what we're doing, but yeah, at least keep in mind that's a different thing. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. But yeah, so I references these two, which don't, or this don't dimension, which doesn't go directly to a datum. That's fine. I don't give a damn. Yeah. It'll do what it needs to do.
All right, and we'll, I guess, so yeah, you were going Continue. over, yeah, you're going over um, detail. Detail view. So uh, if you look at uh, this feature, it's pretty hard to see. Um, I think it's very hard to fit a dimension into here. Um, especially with this, even if you increase the size of this page to C size, which is what it should be printed on, mm -hmm. uh, it's still going to be hard to see. And then same with this one, it's just not a lot of space to try to put the, all the dimension callouts you want. So then this is where you did the detail. Yes, yeah, so right then you here. make details. So I mean, detail A right here, and then detail B right here. And they know, it's, and they just know by looking at it, because it looks kind of similar to this corresponds to that, and this corresponds uh, to there's that. A, there's a letter there. A, ah, and okay. a letter there, B. B. Uh, in this case, that. it's kind of bloody hard to see. But, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so then these are lead to detailed A and B, and they have a scale. Make sure to make them big enough that you can see. Um, you're not trying to save white space. Yeah. <laughs> Spend as, use as much as if you need, and then if it's not enough, just, just make, make, it, it make a new, make a bigger piece of paper. Basically. Yeah. Um, so yeah, in this case, I call out this slot here. I say um, the width of it is 1.2 plus or minus 0.05. That's pretty dang tight, but it's what we needed. Uh, and then there's six of them. Yeah. Um, I could have included a call out saying only one of them is in this section view, but I think it's pretty obvious, so yeah. I didn't include it. And then the same for the depth of the hole, uh, six times. Gotcha. Yada. And okay. then for this one, I um, just I, did, I really just needed a bit, uh, space to describe what it is. Yeah. So it's an eighth inch, uh, eighth inch uh, diameter section. Yeah. And that was um, so that's just you take an eighth inch diameter. Milling bit yeah, and they just the, yeah pop it in. Well, I think um, we'll do another video later on. This is why we chose certain features and everything like that because this is just more going with the drawing. We can go and yeah. Talk about so this creating is for, yeah. This is just to make a, the thing easier to make. Yeah. Um, also, it's good to make uh, a note. So this drawing is in metric. Yeah. This is a dimension I put in uh, U.S. Yeah. units. And so anytime mention, you do that, you want to make a big very, old note saying. This is an English dimension on a metric drawing, and just so that nobody <laughs> fucks it up. Now, I don't think anyone's going to try to make it uh, one-eighth of a millimeter. Yeah. But you never know. <laughs> you just want to be so very explicit. Yeah, you want to be very clear about that. Gotcha. Um, you don't want anyone second-guessing it, basically. Yep. Um, another thing, good thing to mention is uh, radii. Yeah. So most of the stuff is going to be made by clamping this down yes. and then having a milling bit go yeah. go around yeah. whatever yeah. Um, and those things have radii they can't make Square perfectly sharp corners, corners. Yeah. so for that reason all of the inner uh, inside corners I guess yeah. have need to have radii yeah. so in this case I did 4 R3 so 3 is a radius of 3 millimeters mm -hmm. So a six millimeter diameter bit, basically. And it knows, and it knows that it's this. How come? I, how does it know it's this? These? Oh, because there's only four. Yeah. So I said four times. Um, I am assuming that they can identify which four. Because then, because the only other ones you explicitly yeah. stated. Or actually, yeah. So that one's R one, and that one's R one. And then up uh, here, um, I think so that those are two different. Yeah. So yeah. I'm assuming that they can identify the inside ones differently yeah. from the outside gotcha. ones. Although I did also make those the same oh, size, the so that helps. Okay. Gotcha. So four R threes. And how'd you choose R three? Um, it was. Or? It looked good enough on the uh, solid. Works. I was <laughs> like, gotcha. yeah, that looks okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, which is. Like give it so out. unless, so unless um, there's like a specific requirement from yeah. so try to make tolerances as loose as you can reasonably get away with. Yeah. Um, but doing that can take a lot more design work to say okay if it's off by that amount, could, is my part still going to fit? Yeah. And that takes the engineer a lot more time. So then you got to kind of try to guess a balance between engineering work and machining time. Yeah. So, just so kind of balance there. Uh, yeah. I could have spent a lot more time making these looser tolerances, and then it definitely would have cost less, but I just don't yeah. have the time. So. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, so. uh, yep. Yeah, uh, honestly, I, yeah. So 0.1 millimeter tolerances are generally good on most stuff, and then radii of um, one millimeter is a little tough. But, okay, you know, but if you, you did like it. a three millimeter, then that's pretty easy to... Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
Yeah. So one millimeter only if you really need it. Yeah. Uh, other things, uh, section views. Oh yeah. So we made this uh, section view here, so A to A. Um, these arrows are saying you're looking from uh, that direction. Yeah. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter. Yeah. It's going to look basically the same anyways. And but, that was um, just to denote and, the thickness. Yeah, so that's just to denote the thickness here. And the reason you do that is because I can have hidden lines showing on parts like this. Yeah. Uh, but you generally don't want to dimension hidden lines. It's yeah. just bad practice. Yep, yeah. So you want to be dimensioning a solid section. So in this case, sense. I made a section line, specified that section. Okay. Uh, pretty simple. Um, sure, there's more details we can go into on that, but that's the main thing. Perfect. All right, unless you see something that's like critical, critical that. Yeah, pop so out. the last thing is just for yeah. assembly drawings. Yeah. Make sure and include the parts. materials. So uh, yeah. the part names and then the part numbers. And then the quantity. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much all Actually, I Actually, okay, that was good to know because I was wondering how do they know there's two? It's like, okay, but it's this with the bill of materials. Yes. That's good. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So you can see your left hand, right hand, and then two tops because one's top, one's bottom. All right, and that's everything you ever need to know about engineering drugs. Completely. Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. Ah, uh, jeez. All right. But, uh, but it's a good start. And yeah. That's, uh, it's what you need. Do you know where um, people would go to if they wanted to learn more about engineering drugs? Like, um, been... The ASME document, the. Um, why was it 14.5 14, 14 2009 that I posted yeah. a general one, otherwise just Google stuff. There's a, uh, there's a website that post that's pretty good. Okay. Um, but yeah, so there's different websites you can go to for general stuff, and then for more specific stuff, you might have to go into the manual. Gotcha. Okay, perfect. Well, there you go, guys. Go knock yourselves out. <laughs>